Hello, today we're going to talk about finding centroids in 3D uh, via the first moment integral. Um, so, <clears throat> just as kind of a review, uh, the centroid of a shape uh, is going to be the geometric center of that uh, volume for a 3D problem. Um, so this point represents the average uh, kind of x, y, and z coordinate uh, of our shape. Um, <clears throat> for a part that has a uniform density, uh, anything that's made of kind of a single material, the centroid of that volume and the center of mass of that volume are going to be the same thing for now. Uh, we're going to talk later on with the center of mass calculations, what to do for non-uniform densities. Uh, but for now, <clears throat> we want to know the location of the centroid, uh, and it's essential for a number of calculations within engineering mechanics. All right, so... <clears throat> To find the centroid for this 3D shape, uh, we're going to be using the 3D first rectangular volume moment integral here. Um, so, <clears throat> since the centroid is a point, um, and in 3D it's going to have x, y, and z coordinates, uh, we're going to need to do three calculations. One to find the x coordinate, one to find the y coordinate, and one to find the z coordinate. Um, so each one of these is going to involve this 3D first rectangular volume moment integral calculation. So, <clears throat> to find the average x coordinate of kind of a set number of points, um, so we've got all these points kind of floating around in this volume, um, to find the average x coordinate of that, um, of those points, we would take all of those points, we'd sum up all of the x coordinates, and we divide it by the number of points. And so I just add up all the x coordinates, divide it by n to find my average. I'm going to do something similar, uh, only with an infinite number of points to sum th something up, I need to use the integral to find that. Um, so we're going to integrate uh, all of those x coordinates over the volume, and we're going to divide by the total volume of the shape. And so this is the moment integral I'm looking to do to try to find the uh, x coordinate for the centroid. All right, so let's look at what some of these terms mean. All right, so now we have a cone, and this time we're actually looking for the z coordinate. So we've got uh, x and y, um, and <clears throat> we want to find the z coordinate of the centroid, uh, and so that is going to involve the moment integral uh, going from z minimum, which is down here at the base, up to z maximum up here at the top. So I'm moving down from the base up to the top, uh, and I'm integrating dv, and that function gets multiplied by z. Um, so dv is the rate of change of the volume. Uh, so the rate of the change of the volume is going to be the area uh, kind of as I move up, and so I take a cross-sectional area at any one value of z, uh, and it's going to change as we move from the bottom up to the top. It's always going to be a circle, but it's going to get smaller and smaller. Um, so I need to write out an equation uh, for that area. Uh, so for my circle, it would be pi r squared. r is going to depend on the height, um, and it's just kind of a linear. It, it falls from a maximum value down here linearly to zero up here. Uh, so I write that in terms of z. Um, so it's the area times the rate of change of z. So the faster I go up, the faster the volume changes. Uh, and the bigger the area, the faster the volume changes. So that dv function is the area at any one point times dz. I multiply that function times z itself. Uh, this is the moment integral part of that. Uh, and I take the integral from that minimum value up to that maximum value, divide that whole moment integral by my volume, and that will give me the z position of my centroid here. All right, so <clears throat> finding the centroid using symmetry. Uh, sometimes we can kind of skip some steps here. Um, so <clears throat> one thing that's going to be particularly important uh, with 3D stuff uh, is symmetry. And so with the cone, we'll notice you know to the left side and the right side they're mirror images of each other. The front side and the back side are mirror images of each other. Uh, if I have any sort of plane of symmetry, um, the centroid is going to have to lie in that plane. Uh, so like I said, left and right, front and back, um, both of those are planes of symmetry. Uh, and so <clears throat> that plane of symmetry contains my centroid. 
since I have two of them, I know that the centroid lies somewhere along this central line here. Uh, the only thing I would need to find, kind of going back, would be the z coordinate, uh, and I could use this calculation for that. All right, so using planes of symmetry and using those integral calculations, uh, I can find any of my um, moment, or sorry, any of my centroid coordinates. So, <clears throat> with that, that's all we have for the uh, centroid calculations for 3D volumes. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.